Okay, so what we're going to be doing today is covering uh, emissive lighting uh, in the uh, use of creating uh, illuminated displays. So several people have uh, illuminated displays like on monitors and such. So I kind of wanted to cover uh, how that is done in uh, 3ds Max. So this is what we're going to be covering today. Okay, so in Max, what I have here is just a simple setup. So I've just got a plane right here and a plane on the ground and I've got a couple of 3D objects in here so we can kind of have something to reflect into this. Okay, so what we're doing here is we're making an illuminated material. So I'm not putting a light on this plane. We're going to put a material and the uh, material is going to be self-illuminated and that's referred to as an emissive light, an emissive material. Okay, so um, what I've got here is uh, two materials. This is just the material that I have on the uh, ground plane and on the uh, little objects that I put in here. I put an object in, the big, in front of and an object behind it so we can see it because we're going to uh, play with translucency. Then uh, on our material here, all I'm really doing is I'm dropping in... Uh, maps in our emissive slots okay which are right here the this is how much emiss emissive and this is the color for the emissive all right so what I'm actually doing here is okay so basically I have a, a bitmap that I'm using okay so you create a bitmap uh, that you would use for your interface. So this is just something I downloaded from the internet. Uh, so this is my color map that I'm going to be using. Now I also generated a transparency map. So basically I created a grayscale uh, in um, Max. Max reads luminosity as transparency, which means black. Anything that's black is transparent. Anything that's white is opaque and anything that's gray is a percentage of transparency. So I just initially, I didn't manipulate this in any way. I just converted it, but could be manipulated in here. Uh, that's according to you and what you would want to do, but I initially just uh, transferred it. So I just took the uh, a copy of the color uh, bitmap and then I just desaturated it so there was no color in it. And I'm using that for my uh, transparency channel because I'm gonna we're gonna play with uh, also in uh, utilizing transparency in this so this is what uh, we're ending up with right now so uh, let's go in here and see how I did this all right so um, let me rearrange these all right so what I have is I have the color map Okay, so I'm taking, you know, this map and I'm going to be plugging it into the color maps area. So when we're doing that and I'm going to come back later and we're going to turn on um, the percentage of weight, how much, but right now we're just going to leave this blank. So it's, this is basically not doing anything for us right now. So right now we're just going straight in, okay. And um, I also am using a cutout, the black and white is a cutout map, and I'll explain that. I'm just going to turn that off for right now. So right now, it's going straight in. So just a map going straight in, and then what we're doing is, is we're plugging it in. This is your color slot, so we're plugging this in as the color of the, of the uh, illumination. And then this is the amount of emissive, and I have it all the way up. To, it's from zero to one, and that's what we're going to be rendering with here. So all I'm doing is just applying that material to a plane. Okay, the plane's already got mapping coordinates on it, so I'm just dragging and dropping this material onto it, and then that's what we're going to get. And so we can render that, and we're going to get something like this. 
so that's just a straight illumination map on there and I can turn up uh, the amount of illumination you know, and how bright it is stop the render here so that's with this set at a hundred if I turn this down say 0 0.5 then that's going to bring it down so it's not as bright and it's kind of sensitive into the higher scale so if we get a 0.1 you see it's getting duller so you can kind of control you know what's going on with that now I am doing a little trick in here and I'm gonna turn these off right now and then I'll show you what I'm doing here in a little bit okay so you'll notice that when I put uh, the light on here that it's opaque so if you were putting this like like on a computer monitor then you'd be good to go here so you could put it right on there and then with the cancel this with the uh, the light directly into the missive color and then you're controlling you know the brightness here and this is you know you're dropping this into this slot which is a missive color and that's getting your color on there and then you can dial in how bright you want it okay but in a lot of cases I've seen where people are doing like almost like a holographic display where it's a glass display that's floating out in space and maybe you want this to be translucent in here okay so that's where that's where this map is coming in so I can put this map directly into your cutout slot and then that's going to set a transparency to it so I'm just going to do a region render here at the bottom so we can kind of see this real quick so now what that's going to do is anywhere that was in the map that was black then this is going to be transparent and anywhere that was gray will be translucent and anywhere that it's white will be opaque and so now we're going to be able to see through this and we'll be able to see the other shape through this So that's through the cutout slot on your physical material. Cutout being uh, making it partly uh, invisible or translucent is what it really is. So black is transparent, white is opaque, and gray is translucent, which is a percentage of transparency. So now you'll see in this particular render, you're seeing that shape through there. So you just kind of have to determine that according to how you're creating your display. If it's on a normal computer monitor, so there's a backing to the monitor and such, then we don't need to see transparency. But sometimes I see people doing floating displays, uh, like a holographic kind of look or floating display, and we want to be able to see through it. And so that's where we're using the cutout slot to give us that information. Okay, so there's the render finished and you can see uh, the translucency in there. So that's just by putting this uh, black and white image. It's just a black and white that I made through there. And that's in your cutout slot. Okay, now what I've got here is some mixed nodes that I use sometimes too. 
okay and what we're doing is is we want to be able to control how much opacity we have in here so this is a mixed node it's an OSL node so if you just come up here into your search and you just type in mix you'll see several nodes pop out okay several of them and the one I am using is just the uh, mix color node right here so you just pull that out that's the node I'm using now this is an OSL node you'll see when you look in here and um, that you have um, OSL nodes and Arnold nodes okay so sometimes uh, when we're getting maps and these are all different maps okay we have three different flavors of maps so we can think of this you have general maps these are the ones that are native to max they're specific to max then you have Arnold maps these are all specific to Arnold they're specifically ones for Arnold and then you have o OSL OSL is a um, universal uh, shader language that can be used in any 3d program so they could be used in Maya too Okay, and that's what I'm using here as an OSL node. Now, the way this works is like if I do it in here for my uh, transparency, okay, so for my cutout. So, what I'm doing here is I'm going to run it into slot A. So, it's running into here. And then I have white in slot B. White is opaque. So, as I increase this number, then it's becoming opaque. So when this is at zero, it's not doing anything. This is just a, dr a direct pass through. Zero is doing nothing. But as I start to increase this, then it's mixing white in with this. So it's, at, it's adding opacity to it. So if I don't want it to be completely translucent, but I want to control that, then I can increase this, which is like it's blocking some of the light as it's going through. Let's do something maybe about like this, and then we'll render that and see what that looks like. I'm going to pause my uh, between renders so you guys don't have to sit here and watch it render. Okay, so what I have here is I've got three renders. This first render is where the setting for our mix here, okay, this is set at one. So one is white, so it's blocking all this, so it's going to be opaque, completely opaque. When I set this to zero, so we're not adding any white, it's just fumbling through, then it's going to be completely translucent like this. And then if I run it like at 0.5, and of course you can do any kind of a mixture of that, uh, then it's going to be partially translucent, so we can see through there. So in something like this one, this one looks like a completely transparent glass that we can see through. This one over here is an opaque piece of glass like you would have maybe on a computer monitor. And this one is maybe more like a frosted piece of glass that's blocking parts of the um, translucency it goes through. And so you're controlling all that with, the, um, with this mix with the amount of white that you're mixing into your bitmap. So the black right here is replaced with the bitmap and you're dialing in white with it. Okay. Now there's some other things that we can do too. Like if I want to, another way that I can control some of this translucency uh, too, and I'm going to take this down to zero, is I can do what's called clamping. Okay. And let me explain that to you. So, um, When we're uh, using this bitmap, you can go down here on your bitmap, okay, so on the bitmap itself, so this bitmap, well, there's a section here called output. And then if I turn on this enable color map, okay, and let's get rid of these, let's go back to zero, okay. Then I can come in here and I can add some points on this curve. Now this curve is this gradation down here that's from black to white. Like a nice slope 
and so that's getting us a nice gradation but I could control this and make it a little bit harder so if I click on this enable color map then I can get to this curve then I can come here and add a couple of points so just click on this add points and click on this line and then we'll go to move it and then what I can do is as I start manipulating these I can kind of start crunching some of that black and then I can actually kind of increase the white so if I come in something like this and I take both of these and I move them left or right if I move them what right we're adding more white into it and so I'm crunching and uh, what's happening to the whites that's in here so I have a way for us to through this curve to be able to manipulate this and the more that you get this directly underneath there then it's getting a sharper um, contrast in there okay so we can make it so that we're really punching the white to be okay but we're watering down the black and we can do that too let's get something maybe maybe something like and we'll see what that gets us okay so now this one on the right here is what the render looked like once I came in and I started uh, crushing this a little bit and controlling how much of the gray and how much of the black and how much of the white I can alter the look of this some okay so to get the final look that you're wanting you can actually manipulate um, this bitmap through this output now you can also do this through um, So if I go to the black and white here in Photoshop, so you could, oops, I don't need that. I wanted to, I can add a levels on this. And by doing that, then you could go in here and crush this to control exactly how much, you know, the wider this is, then the brighter that part is going to be. And the more black, the more translucent. So you can come in here and kind of manipulate this in Photoshop too. This is a little bit more accurate way of doing it, uh, but it does take a little bit longer because you're having to bounce back and forth from Photoshop and adjusting it and bring it back in. Whereas my other method, um, we were being able to do it on the fly inside of here. Okay, so both of those are methods to kind of control uh, the transparency of the uh, object. All right. Now we can do a similar thing on um, with our, our color in here too. So if we want to use this map to control the emissive map. So in other words, what we're doing is telling it to control this. So now we're putting a map that's going to control th that uh, the amount okay and we can do that too and then it's the same thing if we have white in here then we're graying it down um, so we can control how bright the uh, the, the uh, luminosity is by doing this too okay so that's a possibility also is coming in here and, and playing this mix in, in case this is too bright and you want to take it down some you can do that too so all of these are options. So basically, the this colors covers the control of the color that's in the emissive. This controls the amount of the emissive, how bright it is. And this, instead of just being a straight dial, you can actually bring um, the color in and it's controlling how much it is. And then you can mix it all down too. It's another way you can do that. Then the last thing that I wanted to cover that I do also 
is sometimes to me when I'm rendering this, um, I want to control a little bit more about the lighting down here. Okay, so I want to boost the lighting that's down towards the ground. So what I do is I come in and put some photometric lights in here. And let me show you what I mean by that. Okay, so when you're uh, making your lights, you have two choices on lights. You have photometric lights and you have Arnold lights. You would never use a standard light. It's either photometric or Arnold. Standards do not work. These are standard lights inside of Max that are made for the scan line renderer. If you use these lights, they're not supported by Arnold, so they won't do anything. So you're using photometrics. These are physical-based lights that are made uh, specifically for Max, so they will funnel to any renderer. They'll funnel to Arnold, which is built in Max, but some other places you may go might be using V-Ray or some other renderers and uh, photometrics will work. Then you have lights that are specific for Arnold, uh, and so either one of these can be used for Arnold. Now for this particular thing I'm doing here, I'm using photometric lights. And the reason I'm using photometric lights is photometric lights has a far attenuation built into it. And what that means is, is when I turn this on, I can control how far the light goes out before it trails off. Uh, natively inside of Arnold, you can't do that. Arnold uh, makes you do everything as a plug-in. So if I was to go with an Arnold and I did something like change this to be, uh, we could do something like a, um, a point light would be fine. Then in order to make it trail off, you have to put an Arnold modifier on it. Okay, so you have to put like an Arnold decay filter on it, and then you can do an attenuation with an Arnold light. Okay, um, so you can do the same thing with an Arnold that you can with a uh, photometric, but the difference is, is that, uh, let's turn on. is that uh, you have to add a modifier for the Arnold and it's built into the photometric. So other than that, Arnold lights and photometrics, they're pretty much the same. They're a little bit different. I do like Arnold lights, some of its flexibility a little bit more, but then I like some of, of the photometric lights a little bit more. So they both have um, purposes, okay? So for this particular one, so I don't have to do this additional thing, I'm using photometrics. Okay, the other thing that I'm doing with this photometric is uh, they normally default to, to be a uniform spherical like this, which means the light goes both ways from that plane. I'm using uniform diffuse, so the light is only going on the side of the plane, so it's only going to go out this direction. Okay, and I'm going to go ahead and turn this one on, and let's go ahead and I'm going to um, let's go back to our okay so when I turn this on what I'm doing is I'm not really using Kelvin normally I'm always harking at you guys to use Kelvin but um, your, your shadows will always be ray trace shadow you'll never use any of these other shadows in here for the most part unless you do really specialty stuff stay away from anything but ray trace shadows which are real tra shadows we're using this not to be real world lights but what we're trying to do is to pull some of the lights that are in this piece and it's, so it's got kind of a, a bluish light and so I'm just dialing in a blue light that's similar to what's in here and then when I render this, let's do a region render. And let's make our region a little bit bigger. So what that's going to do is add this, see this kind of a bluish turquoise light that's down here. So when this is illuminating, um, this is kind of where I'm kind of doing an artistic vision, so in my mind, I want a little bit more of this light bouncing down on the grain on the ground here. So that's where I'm telling it uh, to do that. And as a matter of fact, let's go to a let's go to 
a active mode. And then we'll be able to see me yeah, making adjustments. Okay, so this blue is being controlled down here, and um, you'll see I have I have it dialed down really low. Okay, so if I come in here and I start kicking this up, then you'll see that's to me that's way too much light than what would be coming out of this. Okay, the other thing I'm doing is an attenuation because this light's going on forever. To me, it would only be situated in here. So I'm using um, this attenuation where we're making these. Uh, the way this works is you have an inner ring and an outer ring. So a start and an end. Anything outside of the outside ring is no light. Anything inside of the uh, start light is 100%, and then the distance between them is the fall off. So this is where this is falling off. So I could come in here, and I can start bringing my inner in a little bit, making it smaller, and then I can make this a little bit bigger if I wanted to. So I'm going to be able to control how far the light is coming out and then turning it down so it's very subtle. I don't want it, you know, I, I, I shouldn't really notice it. It shouldn't be something that jumps out to me light. All I'm trying to get the illusion is that we're getting this reflection and everything of this, but we're getting a little bit more light out there, okay? I also put another one over here, and I, what I was doing is trying to get this orange of these buttons right here. So let's move this over and so when I turn on uh, that light we'll get a little bit of an orange right in there so what I'm doing with these two lights is I'm just kind of punching this this is not reality it's not physical base this is where I go to my my illustrators mindset where it's like when I'm looking at it I feel like oh it needs a little bit of an orange lighting here it needs a little bit more of a blue light in here to make these look like that they're coming off of this and so these are some additional things that I do to kind of boost uh, that illumination by just putting some additional lights in here and it's kind of faking it but it punches it a little bit Okay, let's go back to Photoshop. Okay, so let's get rid of that. Okay, so let's kind of review here in Photoshop. So there's what it looks like with uh, just putting the, the map on there by itself. No opacity or anything, just on there kicking it up at 100% and then you're getting a nice glow in there okay now this reflection down here this material has a hundred percent reflection on it and it's really unless this was a mirror down here it normally wouldn't be that way so uh, if I come in here and I start um, what I'm doing is you're adding uh, roughness to it so as I add roughness to this gray surface then it's going to start breaking up. Uh, see how that's not as reflective. And here's one that's a little less defined. So you can go big time defined. You can break it up a little bit, okay, or you could break it up a lot, okay, and that's the reflection down here. So here it is with the transparency 100%. So this is with no transparency on it, translucency. This is where it's got translucency, so we're only going to see it where the, um, the bitmap is. And then this is one where I'm kicking up the amount of light. And that's done by adding in here, by adding this in. Then I can punch that up some. So I get more light through that. OK. 
Okay, and here's what the lights added on the ground down there. Now here it is where I've done a denoiser. Okay, so what you're you see how grainy this is, so I rendered it out and then I ran a denoiser on it that got rid of that grain that was down there. So that's after it's run by denoiser. Okay, this is before and after the lights on the ground. Okay. So adding those lights just pops it. But just don't go too much over. You know, a lot of times I see students just add way too much. It should be subtle what you're, that illumination you're getting off that screen. Okay, so that is how to approach uh, in Max. Uh, creating illumination uh, screens is it's a combination of using um, emissive and then color maps for your color of the emissive and then you can um, just dial straight in but you can also use a bitmap to uh, create the amount so it's not amount overall and then of course you can water it down by running it through a uh, mix you can do that too and then we're dealing with the cutout map okay hopefully that helps you guys with understanding how to do displays and do some additional lighting effects and uh, I uh, hope that helps you out okay thank you very much